Committee is obviously going to go down a number of different roads uh, about who knew what when, who was talking to coordinators of the protest. Did you talk to the former president that day? I've talked to the former president umpteen times, thousands. I mean, I may not thousands I mean, on times, January but countless, 6th. countless times. I talked to the president. I never talk about what we talk about because I just don't think that's appropriate. Just like I don't talk about what happens in Republican conferences. So sure. I've talked to the president numerous times. Uh, I continue to talk to the president. No, no, since no I he's mean left on office. January 6th, Congressman. Yes, uh, I mean I've talked to the president. Uh, I've talked to the president so many I can't remember all the days I've talked to him but I've certainly talked to the president yeah and and on that day was can you share any of the insight of, of what he was thinking about that day uh, Brett the people we need to come testify are the people who can testify to the fundamental questions why didn't the United States Capitol the people's house have an appropriate security posture on that day and what have we done those are the people we need to hear from yeah. those are that, that's the information and testimony we need to get uh, that's what we should focus on but I don't think that Benny Thompson the chairman of this committee said everything's on the table until we raise this issue about the speaker's office is the one who knows what what the security posture and why it was the way it was once we raise that question, said, well, everything's on the table. There's some confusion over what you told Brett Baer on Fox News on Tuesday night. So I want to clear it up. First off, yes or no, did you speak with President Trump on January 6th? Yeah, I mean, I speak. I, I spoke with the president last week. I speak with the president all the time. I spoke with him on January 6th. I mean, I talk with President Trump all the time. And that's that's I don't think that's unusual. Uh, I would expect members of Congress to talk with the president of the United States when they're trying to get done the things they told the voters in their district to do. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of amazed sometimes that people keep asking this, but of course I talk to the president all the time. I talked to him, like I said, I talked to him last week. On January 6th, did you speak with him before, during, or after the Capitol was attacked? Uh, I'd have to go, I, 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 I spoke with him that day after, I think after. I don't know if I spoke with him in the morning or not. I, mean, I, I just don't know. Uh, I'd have to go back and I, I mean, I don't I don't I don't, I don't know uh, th that w when when those conversations happen. But um, but uh, what I know is I spoke with him all the time. But but Taylor, the, the key here is the people we need to speak to. The people we need to talk to are the ones who can answer the question. Why wasn't there a better security presence that day? This is Jim Jordan, first on Fox News and then on Spectrum News, revealing that in fact he had spoken with Donald Trump on January 6th, thereby implicating himself in the insurrection that he was nearly placed on the commission to investigate. Only now, he won't be so much investigating it as he'll likely be testifying for it. What's especially telling is that knowing, ultimately, that Jim Jordan did speak to Donald Trump on January 6th, when you go back and watch his reaction to Brett Baer asking if he spoke to Trump, you can see just how panicked Jim Jordan was. He tried to deflect by desperately claiming that he spoke to Trump umpteen, thousands of times, countless times, numerous times, so many times that he can't even remember how many times. It is remarkable the sheer quantity of synonyms Jim Jordan can come up with while trying to insulate himself amid his complicity in the events of January 6th. Even when asked again on Spectrum News, he fumbled furiously over whether he'd spoken to Trump before or after the insurrection. And look, even if he does speak to Trump frequently, you would think that Jordan would still remember whether he spoke to the then President of the United States before or after an insurrection on the US Capitol. That's not exactly your average Wednesday. Although, in his defense, I suppose it would get difficult separating one subversion of democracy from the next when your political ally is Donald Trump. But Jim Jordan's frantic self-preservation aside, what's even worse is Jordan claiming that the fundamental question here is why wasn't there more security at the Capitol? Right. That's the fundamental question. Not that the literal president of the United States incited a murderous mob to assassinate elected officials. No, that part is totally above board. The real issue here is why wasn't there enough security for the mob that the president of the United States incited? And look, I get that Republicans really, really don't want to acknowledge their own party's wrongdoing as far as January 6th is concerned because the party exists to serve Donald Trump and the insurrection was literally born out of his big lie. But trying to convince people that Nancy Pelosi is to blame is absurd even for Jim Jordan. And yet it shouldn't come as a surprise considering now we know that the whole reason for Jordan's deflection onto Pelosi is because he himself is complicit. The guy literally spoke to Trump on January 6th, the day of the insurrection. And so clearly he's fair game to be called to testify in front of this committee, which makes the fact that McCarthy tried to put him on the committee even more outrageous. That's like placing Al Qaeda on the 9-11 commission and then lashing out at everyone else when you get called on it. And by the way, this is why Liz Cheney herself acknowledged that Jordan may be a material witness. 
You know, I think that uh, Congressman Jordan may well be a material witness. Uh, he's somebody who was uh, involved in a number of meetings in the lead up to uh, what happened on January 6th, uh, involved in planning for January 6th, uh, certainly for the objections that day, as he said publicly. Uh, so he may well be a material witness. Uh, we will, on this committee, uh, follow the facts wherever they go uh, and uh, and get to the bottom of it. And, and George will do it in a nonpartisan way. And if that didn't strike the fear of God into Jordan, there was always this statement by Benny Thompson, who chairs the January 6th committee. Uh, nothing is off limits in this investigation. We are absolutely committed uh, to getting to the bottom of, of what happened. As you know, I have subpoena power. I have no reluctance whatsoever in issuing subpoenas for information, uh, telephone logs to the White House, uh, especially during the times of, of uh, January 6th. Uh, members of Congress have already admitted that they talked to the White House while it was going on. Now many of them are trying to walk back uh, the conversation they had. But, you know, uh, there's a record. Uh, and in, in this institution, in a democracy, those records are important. We plan to pursue them. And so with all of that said, why, might you ask, would McCarthy want to do something like put Jim Jordan, who clearly has legal exposure here, on the January 6th committee? It's because McCarthy is in the same boat. He is a kindred spirit. He also spoke to Trump on the phone on January 6th. Remember, Republican lawmaker Jamie Herrera Butler recounted what McCarthy himself told her about what he said while speaking with Trump on the phone. Herrera Butler said, quote, when McCarthy finally reached the president on January 6th and asked him to publicly and forcefully call off the riot, the president initially repeated the falsehood that it was Antifa that had breached the Capitol. McCarthy refuted that and told the president that these were Trump supporters. That's when, according to McCarthy, the president said, quote, well, Kevin, I guess these people are more upset about the election than you are. And again, that's coming from a Republican. Herrera Butler stood to gain nothing by revealing this information. If anything, she had every reason not to reveal it, considering this is effectively an invitation for excommunication from her own party. But despite the usual protocol from the GOP, she revealed it anyway because it's the truth. So look, we'll continue to get obfuscations and deflections from people like Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan, but if there was ever a me thinks you doth protest too much moment, this is it. The very people pushing back the hardest against accountability are those with personal stakes in this investigation. And rather than preventing the probe from moving forward, it's only served to put an even bigger target on their backs. So despite their protests, this committee will continue moving forward, subpoenas will be issued, and there will be accountability for the people involved in one of the darkest days in American history. If you enjoyed that video and you're looking for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. It's a no BS look at the top stories of the week, along with interviews with the top names in politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, and more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, click the subscribe link right here on this screen to join the more than 1 million people who've already subscribed to my channel. And and finally, to donate to my Don't Be a Mitch Fund, where I'm raising money for a whole raft of different voter outreach and voter registration groups in the closest states ahead of midterms in 2022, including Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Texas, you can find that link on this screen as well. Thanks for watching.